Hello, welcome to this video mini lesson introduction to ANOVA or Analysis of Variance. Let's talk about our independent samples t-test which we're familiar with and, and if you recall independent samples t-test can compare two independent samples to one another to see if there is a statistically significant difference between them. In this particular case, I'm comparing students who have taken a foreign language to students who have not taken a foreign language to see which group is better prepared for college. Let's say though that I decided instead of just comparing students who had had foreign language to students who had not had foreign language, that instead I wanted to compare students who had no foreign language or my control group to students who had taken Spanish, Latin, and Mandarin Chinese. So now I actually have four different groupings as opposed to two. Well, the problem with using independent samples t-test is it can only compare two samples at a time. So if we used it to do this, I'd have to compare these two and these two and these two, and then I'd have to compare these two and these two, and then I'd have to compare these two. And in doing so, I would actually be making six different comparisons here. And when you make so many repeated analyses, you get what's called family-wise error. And that is bad, because that will really interfere with getting true results. So for this reason, repeated use of the independent samples t-test when you have more than two samples is inappropriate. And instead, what we want to do is use ANOVA, or analysis of variance. So in this particular graphic, you have our four different samples here. Students who have had no foreign language, Spanish, Latin, and Mandarin Chinese. And for each of them, I've tried to sort of represent the distribution of each uh, each grouping or each sample, as well as the distribution of all four of these samples put together. Now the mean of all the distribution that represents all four samples put together is known as the grand mean. So when we were, are doing analysis of variance, we are actually analyzing different types of variance altogether. So the first thing that we're doing is we're analyzing the variance within each of our samples or each of our groupings. And we are also analyzing the variance between the mean of each sample and our grand mean. That is known as between group variance. And then we're also going to total up all of this variance as well. So we're looking at variance within each sample or group, variance between each sample and the grand mean, and then total variance, which is all of the variance put together. Now, in this, in an ANOVA situation, your null hypothesis would be that the means of each of these different groupings are equivalent. The alternate hypothesis is simply that the means of all, all of these means are not equivalent. So there's actually a number of ways that you can violate or reject the null hypothesis. These two means could be different, even though the rest are equivalent, or these two means could be different, or all three of these, et cetera, et cetera. So what's interesting is ANOVA will only tell us whether or not we can support the null hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis. We actually have to do a separate analysis known as a post hoc analysis to determine which of the samples are actually statistically significantly different from each other. ANOVA is purely telling us whether there is some sort of statistical significant difference somewhere amongst our samples. All right, so let's look at how this sort of works out here. We use sum of squares when we are computing ANOVA. And essentially, the sum of squares of the total variance, or excuse me, the total sum of squares, which would be represent all of the variance, all three types of variance, excuse me, the total variance, which incorporates the variance within the groups and the variance between the groups. That's total variance. So the sum of squares of our total variance, for our total variance, is equivalent to the sum of squares of the between variance and the sum of squares representing the within variance, if that makes any sense. And then I can use a pure, simple algebraic move to say that the sum of squares within is equal to the sum of squares total minus the sum of squares between. And that's important because when you come over here in 
in ANOVA, you are going to create, you're going to transform your data into an F distribution. So we've already talked about the Z distribution, the T distribution. Now we're talking about the F distribution. And for ANOVA, F is simply the variance between samples divided by the variance within. But in order to calculate the variance within, you need to subtract the variance between from the total variance. So here's what's interesting. The larger your F value, the more likely you are going to be able to reject the null hypothesis. So in order to do that, obviously you want a smaller number in your denominator. So you want smaller within group variance. You want larger between group variance, essentially. So you use the distribution of F lookup table to see which your F distribution, excuse me, which your F value should be. Um, based on all of your sample sizes because sample size really influences your ANOVA calculations. And then, based on your comparison of your lookup F value to your actual F value, you can determine whether or not your data supports the null hypothesis or the alternate hypothesis. But that's all it tells you, is whether or not you can support your um, null hypothesis or your alternate hypothesis. So like I said a minute ago, you have to do a separate post hoc analysis in order to determine which of these samples is really statistically different from each other or etc. Because all we know at this point, if we have data that supports the alternate hypothesis and suggests we need to reject the null hypothesis, all we know is that there's some statistically significant difference amongst these in some way, but we don't know specifically which groups are statistically different from others. So in order to do that, there are a number of different post hoc analyses you can do. Tukey's S, uh, excuse me, HSD, which stands for honestly significantly different. That name totally cracks me up. This is probably the most common. And the formula for this is just that HSD equals the Q range times um, the mean squares for within divided by N which is that sample size. So, but what's nice is that SPSS will calculate this for you, but this Q range, again, comes from a lookup table, so that's important to note. Also, I wanted to point out to you that degrees of freedom, as we've been talking about, is again very important in ANOVA calculations, and like I mentioned, the the size of your sample is really important. So here's what you know, need to know about degrees of freedom. So for your sum of squares for your total variation, variance, it's just n minus 1, which we're sort of used to for degrees of freedom. So that's your total, total n of all of your groupings put together. That's key, okay? So that's all four different groups put together, all that total n minus 1. Okay, now for your between group sum of squares, excuse me, between, between group variance represented by sum of squares sub b, you have the number of groupings, which in our case is 4, minus 1, so that would be 3. And then for your within, your sum of square within, so your within group variance, you're going to take your total n and subtract your number of groups from it. And these are the degrees of freedom that you use in the formula that you would that you could use to hand calculate ANOVA if you're looking for a really good time. However, SPSS does a lovely job of calculating ANOVA for you, and we'll look at an example of the output um, from SPSS in part two of this. But one more thing that I wanted to show you is how to calculate effect size with ANOVA. So we've been talking about how to cal calculate effect size with, for example, single, or excuse me, independent sample, uh, independent samples t-test and single sample t-test. And now we're looking at how to calculate effect size for ANOVA. And what we use, this is a Greek symbol for eta. So eta squared equals the sum of squares for between variance and the sum of squares for total variance. This number, eta squared, will vary somewhere between 0 and 1. And what it's really demonstrating, it's showing you the proportion of variance in the outcome measure. So in our particular example that we've been using, that would be the total variance in students' readiness for college that is explained by the grouping on the independent variable. So in our example we've been using is the total proportion of variance in students' college readiness based on their study of a foreign language in high school. So that's what's known as explained variance. And it's going to be a percentage of 0 to 100 because your, your um, eta squared value is going to be between 1 and 
excuse me, between 0 and 1, that represents between 0 and 100% of explained variance. So uh, there are a number of different sort of standards for what constitutes effect size or like large or small effect size when you're using eta squared. And what uh, Abbott offers us, and this is sort of the the little standard we'll use for our purposes, and that is simply that 0.01 is small, 0.06 is medium, 0.15 is large. So if you think about that, it's 15% of the total variance in college readiness that would be explained by the grouping on our independent variable, which is uh, which foreign language, if any, was taken in high school. So that's just an example that we've got here. And as always, if you have questions, please let me know. Thank you.